Dear children, before we begin this class, let us start with a small prayer. Let us stand up and recite the prayer shown on the screen. We thank you, Lord Almighty, for having brought us together in this Carison class to study and pray and also to know and understand the divine revelations that God has prepared for us. We submit ourselves before the fellowship of the Most Holy Trinity. We pray along with the psalmist, It is you who light my lamp, the Lord my God, light up my darkness. O Jesus, who shines as the everlasting light in our lives, we pray to you to preserve us under your mighty protection in all our deeds of this year. Mother Mary, who strengthened your son during his times of suffering, intercede for us. Today we'll be discussing our 11th chapter that is uh, Disciples Who Receive the Holy Spirit. So, as usually, before entering into this chapter, let us take a recap as to what we discussed in the last chapter. In the last chapter, we discussed a very important sacrament that is the sacrament of baptism and we recalled an event, the event where Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist in the river Jordan. Today, we'll be discussing another sacrament. That is the sacrament of confirmation. And in order to understand this sacrament, again, we'll be discussing an event. So, in order to discuss this event, let us go to the book of Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. So, what happens in the chapter 2 of Acts of the Apostles? So, the ministry of Jesus has already finished. He dies and he resurrects. And he ascends to heaven. And before ascending to heaven, Jesus asked, his, asked his disciples to stay in Jerusalem and pray until they receive the Holy Spirit. So, the disciples in this episode, they are in Jerusalem along with Mother Mary and they are praying. And this is the 50th day, that is the day of Pentecost. 50, 50th day and while they are praying, in a certain place in Jerusalem, the place is completely filled with a strong noise, with a strong wind. And this wind completely, completely overwhelms this place. The wind, the, uh, the noise of the wind is so strong that the people outside can also hear this disturbance. And the place is filled with this, with this wind. And what is happening? In this episode, the disciples receive the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in different languages. Now the speciality over here is that they began to speak in different languages. But the people outside, they began to understand each and everyone and each and everyone in their own native language. Now this is the gift of the tongues. When the disciples are speaking in different languages, the people outside are able to understand in their own languages. And this is exactly what is what is meant by the gift of tongue. So the disciples start preaching immediately when they receive the Holy Spirit. At certain point of time, some people outside, they mock the disciples saying they might have drunk too much wine. So on realizing this, Peter comes outside and says, we are not high on wine. We have received the Holy Spirit and Peter begins to preach. 
Peter begins to preach the whole life of Jesus and on that same day 3000 people receive baptism that is that takes place a conversion now this is the power of the holy spirit when the holy spirit arrives when the holy spirit enter the hearts of the disciples they are completely different they speak different languages which are understood by everyone in their own languages they receive the gifts they received the gift of tongue now in short this is the episode where we see the anointing by the holy spirit and the sacrament that today we are going to discuss is something very much in relation with the anointing of the holy spirit so today we discuss the sacrament of confirmation and in this sacrament we receive the holy spirit so when we discuss the sacrament of baptism in the last week we know we receive baptism at a very young age that is months after being born and after that at a certain period of time before receiving the sacrament of holy communion we undergo the sacrament of confession that is we make our first confession and after our first confession we receive the sacrament of the holy communion by this time we are already and we have already entered the age of 10 or 11 and after this after a few years by the time we are 13 or 14 when we reach the age of 13 or 14 we receive the sacrament of confirmation and what is the speciality of this age by the age of 13 and 14 we know very well who we are we have the conscience so in the sacrament of baptism who professed your faith it is your god parents who professed your faith on behalf of you because you are a child months after being born while in the sacrament of confirmation while you are at the age of 13 or 14 you are ready to profess your own faith that is you're confirming your own faith and what is your faith your faith is that what you reside in the creed i believe in god i believe in jesus christ i believe in the holy spirit i believe in the holy catholic church i believe in the resurrection of the body the conf confession of sins and the eternal life this these these are the contents of your faith and these are being proclaimed by you at a certain period of time and when you are pro proclaiming this on your own behalf you receive sacrament of confirmation now what happens during the sac sacrament of confirmation during the sacrament of confirmation there are several things first of all the sacrament of confirmation is administered by a bishop so the bishop comes to your place and you receive the sacrament of confirmation secondly there takes place several gestures which are very important when you receive the sacrament of confirmation that takes place the laying of hands what does the laying of hands means it is a gesture of affection it is a gesture of blessing when someone lays hands on you when your parent when your mother or your father lays hands on your head what does that mean that he or she your parents are blessing blessing you they are giving you a blessing at the same time when you receive the sacrament of confirmation when the bishop lays hands on you it means it is a gesture of affection it is that he is blessing you he is blessing you with the holy spirit another gesture that takes place during the sacrament of confirmation is the anointing with the oil now this is not any oil this is not the oil that you find in your kitchen no no this is the oil specially prepared and it is called muron i repeat muron this is the oil prepared during the holy week remember the holy week the week that comes in the week which arrives in which we celebrate the whole paschal ministry whole paschal mystery that is palm sunday the holy thursday the holy thursday or the monday thursday good friday and the easter sunday but between palm sunday and the monday thursday between palm sunday and the holy holy thursday there takes place a day in which the bishop gathers along with all the priests of the diocese and there takes place a mass which is known as the chrism mass and during this mass is this oil consecrated the oil which is known as muron so the oil it is very special because it is i know it is consecrated by the bishop himself and this oil is used for your anointing during the con during the sacrament of confirmation now what does this anointing of oil means 
anointing of oil has several significance you have you you have been anointed by oil, you have been anointed by oil during the sacrament of baptism yes but it had the significance of cleansing there takes place anointing of oil during the sacrament of anointing with the sick that when the anointing of the sick the sacrament of the anointing of the sick is given it it means it is healing or it is comfort here in the sacrament of confirmation when you have the anointing of the oil it means something else it means the seal you are sealed by the holy spirit and what does this seal sealing means this sealing means that you belong to someone you belong to god now you belong to jesus christ nobody is to touch you so when you are anointed with, with the oil it means that you are being possessed by god because you have professed your faith now god has taken possession of you you are now a true christian now when you receive this divine protection with the help of the anointing of the oil that takes place another responsibility another responsibility falls on you that when you are being a true christian when you have become a true christian you have the responsibility to profess that faith in all the spheres of your life wherever you go whatever you do it is your responsibility to show with your life with your actions with your words that you are a christian that you belong to god that you belong to jesus christ and that what and that's what the anointing of the oil means so i think i have spoken enough about the sacrament of confirmation the gestures that takes place the laying of hands the anointing of the holy spirit it also means the sign of consecration when you are being anointed by the holy oil that means you are consecrated consecration what does that mean consecration means that you belong to someone in the old testament we find this several times remember saul the first king of israel was anointed with oil that means he was consecrated he was separated to be the king of israel chosen by god same thing happens when king david becomes king he is consecrated he is anointed with oil that is he is consecrated he is separated so when the anointing takes place or anointing with oil takes place on you it means that you are consecrated you are separated that you belong to god and you belong to jesus christ so these are the gestures that takes place during the sacrament of confirmation and this is a very sac- important sacrament that you will receive at a certain point of time so in today's activity what do you need to do you need to you need to go and read chapter 2 of the book of the acts of the apostles chapter 2 of the book of the acts of the apostles and again there is another activity that I, w- i would like to give you today we discuss in detail the sacrament of confirmation in which holy spirit acts so just go and find out what are the gifts of the holy spirit thank you very much let us in the class by thanking god for giving us this wonderful opportunity let us stand and recite the prayer shown on the screen oh merciful lord we thank you for having sent forth upon us your wisdom from the holy heavens from the throne of your glory thank you for having chosen us to be the shining lamps of the world by illuminating darkness and spreading light oh jesus you said It is not the will of my heavenly father that one of these little ones should be lost. We thankfully join our hands before you for holding all of us to your bosom. 
following the example of Mother Mary, who readily accepted to be the handmaid of the Lord, we too pray that we may be strengthened to do God's will in every walk of our life. Amen.